Brooks and Dunn here. Uh, Brooks is the kind of shaggy haired one. Dunn's the one that's trying to escape right now. Um, Brooks, they are a bonded pair. So they are going to have to be adopted together. Okay. Um, Brooks is a little bit older, um, possibly more of a chai chihuahua, maybe a Pomeranian mix in there with his little ears. Oh, he's cute. He loves his belly rub. Um, and he loves to play. He does have a little bit of a, when he walks, he kind of, his back half doesn't quite catch up sometimes. But, you know, he's about 10 years old. So sometimes I think when you get older, your back half may not catch up with you sometimes. Um, and then we also have Dunn. And Dunn is a little more, um, he is not quite as open as Brooks. We'll put it that way. He's been okay. a little upset being in here with me. Like, okay, you've got my brother. That's okay. <laughs> However, I really think that I could go outside and play with someone else instead of you. Um, but, you know, he's been a sweetheart completely. Um, they're just two fun, fun-loving guys. Can you tell us a little bit more about their story, about how they uh, came to the animal rescue there? You know, um, they actually were a transfer in from another county. Okay. Um, they had reached out to us and said, you know, we don't have any room. Could you take these two? Um, and we said, sure. So, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, we don't know much of their story. It does appear that they've been in a home before. Um, they've got some potty training. They're pretty good. They're pretty clean in their kennel. Um, so, you know, they're just, they're good. Two little good little guys. Yeah. Okay. You want down too? Okay. Okay. <laughs> They are too cute, right? They're there. double TV. They're double TV. <laughs> now, Amy, I know you said they're Chihuahua mixes. I have a Chihuahua myself. I feel like sometimes it's one of those dogs that people might think, you know, a certain thing about them and get a bad rap, but they could actually be pretty sweet, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I joke that I'm a, a no Chihuahua household, but, you know, these are two of the sweetest guys I've met. Um, the only interaction we've had before t this morning was occasionally when I would pop in and bring chicken McNuggets. <laughs> and as you can see, they both had absolutely no problem with me holding them. Um, granted, I think because of the lack of support, not having something underneath me where they could feel their legs were okay, uh, that might have been an issue. But, you know, very loving, very sweet boys. So they seem to be pretty good with one another, so they're probably good with other dogs. Do you happen to have any idea how they are with cats? Um, you know, to be honest, with cats, I don't really see where there would be an issue because they're about the size of a cat. Right. Um, generally, we seem to see more issues with dogs that are a little bit larger than cats where they're like, oh, that's a toy, I got to play with it. But so I think, honestly, some of our cats could probably take these guys. <laughs> And I know you were just talking to us before we got to talk to you on here about a fundraiser. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that and if it's um, still going on maybe? Absolutely. So what we have going on right now, um, we actually got shocked completely by surprise. Uh, Tuesday morning, literally about 9 o'clock, because that's when the chat at the, the shelter started blowing up, we actually had the opportunity, uh, Jordan's Way Charities, which is run by Chris Rotunda, he is... Um, goes around and picks up various rescues and shelters to help support and he does four hour long facebook live um, fundraisers so he'll do things like um do push-ups for x amount of money he will he'll cuddle with the dogs he gives them all whipped cream um does different interactions with his people on facebook um some our shelter and our uh, volunteers got involved so there were ice bucket challenges there was whipped cream in the face um, I wasn't able to participate as I was at work, but it did give me a lot of joy watching my mother uh, get multiple whipped cream pies in the face <laughs> and also getting ice poured on her. Um, but, you know, in only four hours, we raised over $5,000. Wow. So wow. That, is, that is huge to us. Um, while that fundraiser is technically over, of course, we're always accepting donations. We are currently in the midst of our building project, which I know we've discussed before, and you guys can find more information on our Facebook page, uh, Hoofston Animal Rescue Team. And, you know, we're expanding from where we only had six large dog kennels. We're now going to have actually, I believe, 16 with indoor and outdoor runs. This will increase space for our small and medium dogs, like our little guys here. Um, so it's a really great thing. We raised over $70,000 last year for that project. Um, and while COVID hasn't affected us as far as adoptions or anything, it actually affected our building costs. So um, our wonderful contractors, um, Bruins and Sons, as well as Silver Brothers, they have donated a lot of time, a lot of their labor costs to us. But we're still doing a fundraiser more for more building materials as the cost has skyrocketed um, with lower production numbers, et cetera. Uh, so we actually have a matching grant going on right now 
where a, a volunteer, where one of our um, sponsors, gosh, has given us, up, will match up to $20,000. So we're also doing that as well right now. Amy, can you tell us about the adoption process right now when it comes to the coronavirus? For people who've never mm -hmm. adopted a pet, can you explain, I guess, what they would have to go through right now? Oh, sure. Absolutely. You can go out to our website, which is heartshelter.org, H-A-R-T, and you can fill out an adoption application. Now, let's say you don't know exactly who you're looking for. Um, definitely, you know, if you know which dog or cat that you're wanting and you find it off our website or off of our Facebook page, then put that animal in. But once you apply to adopt an animal, then we will do a quick reference check. So make sure you tell your references that we're going to be calling them. <laughs> um, and then also do, and then we'll make an appointment for you. So we're not doing open hours right now where you can come in and just kind of pick out whichever animal. We're going to do more one-on-one -on -one with you okay. and work with you to find out which dog or cat may be best for your home and then help bring in the different ones. So we can really, we actually devote more time to you in the age of Corona uh, versus what we may have in the past where it was more of an open hour situation. And Amy, if uh, people want to reach out to you, what is the best contact? Absolutely. Best way to reach us is by, because uh, unfortunately, even though we're here, we're not always able to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. um, but best way to give us a call is 283-0779 and just leave us a voicemail and we'll get back to you. Or you can also message us through our Facebook page. That's usually the quickest way to get a hold of us. And that's at Hoopston Animal Rescue Team on Facebook. All right. Well, thank you so much, Amy. And thank you for introducing us to those cute puppies. All right, thank you. Have a great week. Jacob has your forecast next. We'll be right back.